Hello and welcome to Spirit and Energy, the Lands of Aboriginal Art, our summer exhibition at Salt Contemporary. Spirit and Energy derives its name from the work of Rosalind Janiari behind me here. Uh, Rosalind is an artist from Iwancha Arts in the APY lands and she describes her painting as channeling the spirit and energy of the country. And we thought it was a wonderful name because it really exemplifies a lot of Aboriginal art and how artists, no matter what style, they capture the spirit and energy of their country and of their history. So in this exhibition, we have more than 40 works which represent this. Belinda Golda Ungurai is from Utopia in the Eastern Desert and she is the adopted granddaughter of a very famous artist Emily Kame Ungorai and her other grandmother is Polly Nyala and you can see the influence of both of these artists works in Belinda's lyrical dotting and overlays of dots that she gets which have great depth to her work which is about the bush plum and the bush plum is a sacred as well as a secular fruit for the Anmachura people of the Eastern Desert. Some of the works from the Kimberley in the exhibition include this striking Wanjana figure by one of the younger generation artists from um, Columbaroo in the East Kimberley. Her name is Matilda Oxtoby and she is a really fine protagonist of painting the Wanjana spirit figures. The Wanjana spirit figures uh, painted on the rock walls, which is where she saw many of them, and they are the rain gods of the Kimberley. Um, they're always depicted without a mouth, but they bring fertility and rain to the land. So M Matilda's lovely painting really exemplifies this with the rain. It looks like raindrops falling down the Wanjana's body. Well, one of the other works from the Kimberley is by Mabel Julie. Mabel Julie is a famous artist, a senior artist from Warman Arts in the East Kimberley and her story is about the moon man who in creation times was a man and he climbed to the top of the hill. He was shunned from his community because he fell in love with his mother-in-law which is very taboo and he, from the top of the hill he said to the people, I'm going to come back, I'm the moon, you will all die. And so, as Mabel Julie tells it, um, the moon hides for a few days and then he comes back again. So this very ancient and very uh, traditional story by Mabel Julie is a really important uh, work by this leading and senior award-winning artist. This beautiful glowing work is a rain dreaming story by Rosella Namok from Lockhart River in far north Queensland. Rosella's community of Lockhart River is right on the beach and her work is very much about observing the, um, the way the changing uh, seasons happen over the rain, uh, sorry, over the beach. And her, um, this, this depicts a, a quality called serene, which is a, a phenomenon that you see in um, tropical places where after sunset, the rain appears to fall from a clear sky, quite magical, and her painting captures this. Rosella is one of the leading artists of far north uh, Queensland. She's been painting since she was a very young woman, um, age 17 or 18, and she's now in her 40s and she is a really top painter. So we love showing her work and this is a beautiful example of it. Janet Golda Ungarai is the sister of Belinda Golda, whose work we looked at a little few minutes earlier. Um, and Janet paints the women's stories of her country. In this painting, you can see so many designs of all the stories that represent the women's uh, dreamings of her country. So multifaceted and multidimensional Janet's works. Marinka Burton, painter of this lovely soft painting, is a traditional healer from the APY lands as well as a leading painter and her country is the country of the caterpillar or the caterpillar dreaming to the west of the APY lands and in this dreaming story the caterpillars tunnel under the ground and come up again and form patterns on the desert sand which is what Marinka is representing. 
She also, as a traditional healer, uses the silk of the caterpillar in her healing practice uh, for binding wounds and for healing um, burns. So it's a very multi-dimensional work that represents both the dreaming stories and her practice as a traditional healer. Another traditional healer whose work is a, or she is a leading artist is um, Jeannie Mills Puller. Jeannie is from the Utopia region and she paints these beautiful soft paintings in which she loads the brush with many colours on the same brush stroke, which gives it a lovely quality of very interesting quality. And as a traditional healer, she's also very encouraging of younger women. She plays a big part in her community in encouraging younger women to take up painting and also to uh, practice bush medicine skills and traditional healing practices. Her paintings are about the yam, the native yam which grows in her region, which is both a sacred and a secular plant. And the roots of the yam she represents as the blocks of colour in her paintings and the seeds of the yam are outlined in the dots. Teresa Puller is a well-known artist for Salt Contemporary. She came down to open an exhibition of the women artists from her, from her um, and Madhura country some years ago, a wonderful artist, and her grandmother was Minnie Puller, her mother Barbara Weir, so a big family of artists Teresa comes from, and she paints the country of her grandmother and her mother's country, the same countries. Um, and we've, I've actually been fortunate enough to go to this country, and Teresa's paintings really remind me of it because it's, there's a big river, the Sandover River, which is the main river, which is usually um, dry, but at the moment it's been flowing. Uh, because there have been big rains out there. But the, uh, the Sandover River is a really important site and the women's tracks of the Sandover can be seen representing the ancestral spirit figures as they danced. And they're on big flat rocks, the tracks of the ancestors, and it's a very special and peaceful place. And Teresa paints it in great detail and a wonderful sense of depth and perception, perspective in her work, as well as perception. Emily Puller is a senior artist from the Utopia region. She's in her late 90s and she's been painting for about 20 years. She worked with her sister Minnie Puller when uh, Minnie was obviously alive and they started painting together. And this beautiful energetic painting is extraordinary. It was a very recent painting from Emily and she is still, she's about 98 or so, and she's still painting in this really vibrant style and beautiful colors. Her paintings represent the women's designs in her country and the women's designs on the body as they paint up for ceremonies. So the lines that you see and those circles um, are representative representing the, um, the designs on the body. Selena Tees Puller is a young artist from the Umbladowicz region of the Eastern Desert. Selena is, has been painting for about 15 years and some of her um, styles include the gum blossom painting, which is another exhibit in this exhibition, which was one of her first painting styles. And she paints the uh, gum blossom and the way that it uh, falls on the ground and the different colours and variations of that flower. Another more recent example is the landscape and she is representing the bush landscape in its great vibrancy and life. We tend to think of the desert regions as being uniformly arid and of course they're anything but and this is what Selena does in this very uh, significant large work and she also we also have another couple of works by hers one by her one of them is this smaller uh, work but in both of them in all of these landscape works she uh, she captures the different colors and the changing light of the landscape as well as the vibrant trees and occasionally water features and the um, ant hills that are also dotted throughout the land as well as the always changing and very um, blue and 
uh, purple and different, different coloured skies. So it's a very vibrant and exuberant painting, Selena's landscapes. Kumanjain Nangala was the most senior artist in the community of Papanya until last year when she passed away. And her paintings capture the story of Makanchi, which is a very important uh, water dreaming site to the far west of her community of Papanya, which is about 200 kilometres northwest of Alice Springs and a very famous place in the history of contemporary Aboriginal art. Her paintings of Makanchi represent the dreaming stories of the storm that passed over there and this storm which was picked up by uh, a bird travelled for uh, some, some distance over the rest of the country and the bird dropped the storm into di different places thereby forming great rock holes and water features such as rivers. And Kumanjai Nangala was one of the very early women artists at this community. Um, she didn't paint for years because she was um, not able to. It was a very male-dominated painting movement for many years and created very, very significant artists. When the community developed its own art centre in Papanya after many decades, uh, she was one of the founding artists and she was a very, very important cultural and law woman who taught so many of the younger women about law and culture and painting. So her paintings always had great energy and this wonderful line that ran through them in this very lyrical painting. You can really see it and, and we're delighted to have been able to show this painting which is now a very rare painting as, um, as she passed away last year. The sculptures in the exhibition come from northeast Arnhem Land and they're all traditional um, ochre work, which is uh, ochres are um, from the ground and the artists gather the ochre and then make paint out of it and paint sculptures and carve sculptures. These are two bird figures. The birds are, there's so many birds up there that they've become a very important um, and often represented sculptural form by these two artists. One is a very senior artist um, Bingo, and he paints, incises his work and does these incredibly delicate works which are beautifully carved from one tree. So when you look at the bird with the long beak, it's all carved from one tree, very delicately carved from one, one log. Um, and the birds, are, these are secular objects, so they're they represent the birds in the community. There's also a spiritual nature to the birds. They were um, a, part of, um, a part of the life and death ceremonies and the birds have accompanied people through their whole journey. So they're both a secular and a, and a sacred object. Bingo Wapanda, who's one of the artists of the uh, birds that we were talking about before. He's also carved these two wonderful larikage poles which are of the shark um, which is a traditional story from his coastal region and they're extraordinary works because he's carved the whole thing again as with his birds from the same pole and actually carved into the pole and then the sharks are represented as um, they sort of a sort of like bar relief from the from the um, core of the pole. So the shark story again is one of those multi-dimensional stories that includes the ancestral shark and its relationship with the humans on, in the coastal regions and how the shark and the humans both um, and the ancestral figures all created the lands and the waters that join the lands in northeast Arnhem Land. The largest sculptural works in the exhibition are Larrakidge memorial poles from northeast Arnhem Land. Similar to the birds that we talked about before, the larikidge are uh, with ochre, done with ochre, which is from the earth and ground up and painted. They include the very evocative star dreaming works by Namanapu Maimaru White, who is a 
award-winning and very senior artist from Buku Larangai Mulka, which is the art centre that represents the artists who make these larakidge and memorial poles. They're hollow logs that, are, that have uh, been eaten out by termites and then cut down and painted by the, by the um, Aboriginal people, the Yolngu people of the region. And Namanapu's uh, works really represent the whole of the creation of the Milky Way and the people associated with the Milky Way in Aboriginal cosmology.